Hi and welcome back to my 3D printing corner. Today I want to show you a brand new printer that I built. Not this one. It's around here somewhere. Let me go find it. Okay, so here is the mess that I've created so far. This is the back side and what I've decided to do is ditch the traditional z-axis system so in this I went with a gear reduced block and tackle belted z-drive so I've got some nice carbon fiber parts in here that hold the, the uh, gates idlers I did borrow the Voron gear down here for the gearbox and it's going to fall off the cake holder. So I've got a Duet Maestro in this particular one. Uh, of course it'll fit a Duet Ethernet or a Duet Wi-Fi. Got a cooling fan here with exhaust down here that vents out to the side so it doesn't create any more air currents inside the printer. This goofy thing we'll talk about later. It is basically a stepper damper and I'm still playing around with it to see if it actually does anything. So I've got on this particular one a Hamera extruder but it uses the rail core carriage system so there's a lot of plates and mods already available on Thingiverse that would bolt directly onto this printer without much need for, for modification. Uh, lots of uh, cooling fan shrouds available for, for example. Uh, there's dual setups, dual BMGs, uh, Titan arrows, etc. that easily bolt onto this without too much trouble. Got a little uncomfortable with it on the uh, cake spinner so I decided just to take it down and put it on the table. So right now it's running a mesh grid for its mesh compensation. And you can hear it's, it's, it's a fairly quiet machine. It's a big machine. On the bed I've got 310 millimeters by 320 millimeters. I went with a short Z for my first build. I don't need a lot of Z height. Uh, I don't know if you can see over here, but this is a, a Voron. And you can see how incredibly tall that is. I don't need a lot of tall machines um, for printing objects that are only this tall. So one of my design goals was to have it easily expandable in Z height. So while this one is short, it's very easy with the, the Z belt system to increase the Z height. And one of the reasons I went with the belt is quality rods can get very expensive. Um, this one, for example, I think is 350 millimeters, and as this part just sits right here, it was roughly $120. So the taller your machine gets, the more expensive your Z system gets when you want to run quality straight rods or ball screws. Ball screws get really expensive. And so I've got some different Z wobble tests here. And I'll put up some better pictures. Uh, but basically I've got my CraftBot 3 and it's actually got a ball screw system with a special plate mechanism that tries to eliminate the Z wobble. And you'll see in the pictures, and you can actually feel it on the print too, that that system's not doing a great job and so I'm talking with CraftBot to, to try and figure out how to iron that out a little bit better. This was a Prusa, uh, very good, but you can still feel it. And you'll, you'll see it in the pictures, you won't see it on, on the webcam. This was done on this machine, quite clean. This is, these, all three of these were uh, 0.2 millimeter layer heights. This one, I went ahead and ran 0 0.02 millimeter layer height, so 20 microns versus 200 microns. Just this bottom brim 
this was 15 layers that it printed compared to the 200 micron where it was only five layers. So that's another thing I wanted with this system was to be able to have really good Z accuracy so I can put a really small nozzle and play with what we call our uh, penny prints. Real small prints that you can't get off a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So another example of Z wobble artifacts, and this might show up on the camera. Might have to go ahead and do pictures. So it's got uh, this zebra like texture to it, and you can also feel it. Whereas on a machine with no Z wobble, it's nice and clean. So you can see that zebra stripe effect. Just trying to eliminate that as much as possible. Versus this, where you don't get that, get that effect on it. So, some good, uh, good prints to start off with. Um, I still need to do some tuning. This is on the Hamera extruder. I was having some minor retraction issues. The steamboat did a did come out quite well. This is generally a little bit harder to print because you've got fine details that are on a, a larger layer. So normally your printer, like on a benchy, let me get a good benchy. So when when your slicer gets to this part of the benchy, it slows the print down. But due to the complexity of this print, the layer time is long enough to where the slicer doesn't slow it down. So that makes this a little bit more challenging to print. Um, one thing I've been playing with still is, is getting better cooling. And so I'll continue to, to mess with that. I've got a hang tight uh, fan on there now and still got some minor cooling artifacts that, that are showing up to where I'm not getting the fan flow in the correct direction. I did not put a display on this printer. I am running, uh, since I am running the Duet boards, you get the really nice Duet web control that's built into the board. So it's very easy to use a, a tablet, your cell phone, uh, your computer, your laptop, whatever. And so I can control all my Duet based printers off of the tablet and we can send different commands. The other thing that this will do is it will auto tram the bed level. So what you can see now, it's taking measurements from side to side and it's going to level the gantry in relation to the bed. And so now it tells me it was uh, roughly 10 microns off and it's... You got a big bubble? You going to show us the big bubble? Yeah, we got a big bubble. We need a printer that makes bubbles, huh, buddy? Yeah. You want to say hi? Show everybody? Finally got a haircut, he's proud. So now it's running a mesh grid. And I've got a BL touch on this. So what's nice with the BL touch is I can throw pretty much any material I want on here without having to mess with the nozzle height. So I can put glass on here. As soon as it starts the frame, it's just gonna take the, uh, the height measurement with the BL touch. And generally, I'd say the last 500 prints I've kicked off, I haven't had a, a first layer issue. So I've been really happy with the genuine BL Touch versions 3 and above. Uh, reliability and accuracy has been great on them. 
so now that it's done running the mesh, we can pull up the height map that it's run. And while it's not the prettiest Whoa. looking, it's only got around 70 microns of error, so it's well within the system to compensate. I used the CR10 uh, S bed for this prototype, and I'll switch it over to, to Mix 6 for, for the later versions. Whoa, we got more bubbles. So that's another neat feature of the Duet motherboard is you get the really cool uh, mesh graph built in on something like a Marlin system. This would be a plug-in you, you would find in Octoprint, for example. And you can switch it over to heat map. Again. So a lot of features built in here. And if I take it off rotation mode, you can see that it scales really well to the tablet. So I've really uh, started to like this over the um, like the, the Prusa style uh, encoder wheel where you got to scroll through things. So to set temperature. It's just a drop down. You've got a bunch of presets already in here. And now it's kicked on the temperature. I made a big bubble again. Got another big bubble? Yeah. So. yeah I My friend Lyle from Trailer Alarms is coming over in a few minutes. This is actually his printer. Uh, he gets the first one. And he's going to come pick this up. So we're going to go ahead and uh, kick off a print. And. Uh, you can hear the uh, the noise level. All right, what do you think, Lyle? Are you ready to take it on? Just smoking. I'm ready. Well, just don't touch down there because it'll <laughs> be smoking. <laughs> it's great. Looks well put together. So Ooh. tell us a little bit about TrailerAlarms.com. TrailerAlarms.com started uh, just over 15 years ago. Uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Tommy Muth. I had his trailer broken into uh, a couple times and started using my uh, computer knowledge to uh, do some research and <clears throat> find some solutions and couldn't really find anything all in one place so came up with uh, trailerlearns.com, started buying supplies from different manufacturers so we're kind of the uh, JEGS of, uh, for trailer security. Uh, yeah, and this does have GPS in it. Cool. So you would uh, let me a GPS module one, so it is in here, so I know <laughs> where the printer is. So I'm excited to uh, make customized lids for our uh, alarm systems. Yeah, so here's a bad example of what Lyle is going to use this printer for. I was using a really old print sheet, so you can see the print quality wasn't very great, but he's got a brand new print sheet for it. So we'll get better results. So we were using a uh, Prusa Mini for our basic small lids and needed to step up the game and for our larger lids to have a GPS built into them. And uh, went to the man. You see, uh, because it's a base mode print, the Z is constantly lifting. So you can see there that just how much the, the Z is actually moving. No, if it wasn't this type of system. Yeah, if it was it, something like this where it's just printing layer by layer, right. you might see it moving if it needs to mesh compensate. Uh, but otherwise, you would only see it when it pops in at the layer. Gotcha. But because there's so many, is the motor actually turning more or less? Yeah, it's because it's a base, it's a spiral, right. so it's turning a little bit every single part of the rotation. Still some things to work out on this printer. Lyle's going to take this printer home with him. I'm going to start working on the next one, and then we're going to trade. When I get the next one ready, he's going to bring this one back 
so I can uh, start playing with it, examining the abuse that he's put it through. And I will. And then he's going to take home a better printer. The next version is going to have, uh, in, instead of FDM printed parts, I'm going to go ahead and just get them done out of SLS nylon. Uh, did use carbon fiber parts and lots of aluminum. So I know it's kind of breaking the RepRap rules where you're supposed to print your printer. But we're to the point now where I figure you can print your own CNC machine, so why not start using your CNC machine to make your printer better? So that's it. That's how easy it is to kick off a print. We just hit two buttons and it is off uh, printing one of these and thank you for watching Lyle really wants to get this home so he can start playing with it